So now let's look at aspartame. Okay, aspartame is uh, a substance that is formed from um, two. It's a it's a very short uh, protein, if you will. Uh, I shouldn't use that term with it, but um, aspartame is essentially two amino acids, okay? You'll recall that the amino acids have this uh, basic structure, um, and this particular um, amino acid, okay, this one is aspartic acid, all right, um, uh, I'm sorry, this is glutamic acid, I, um, that's what I did um, before, very similar is aspartic acid, which the only difference, or they all have that same basic part at the top, but they have a different group here, okay? Um, and the difference is it only has one carbon in between instead of two, okay? This is aspartic acid. All right? Um, so they're very, they're very similar. It's also a neurotransmitter. Okay, so it's used um, by the body. Um, and the aspartame is a combination of aspartic acid and another amino acid. Okay, the uh, uh, other amino acid looks like this. Okay, um, has this uh, group here, and this is phenylalanine, okay? So this is the amino uh, acid, the other amino acid. Two amino acids, they're both, they're both used in the body. Um, this one you have to get in your diet. This one your body can manufacture on its own, all right? But uh, nevertheless, um, and this phenylalanine, there's another amino acid, alanine, that looks like this, okay? And then this is a phenyl group. So that's where that gets its name. It's phenylalanine, um, uh, naming this um, substance, okay? So these two, when we um, hook them together with a uh, condensation reaction, okay, um, you get uh, almost aspartame. There's one other difference, and that is uh, we take this um, OH and we replace it with a CH3 group, right? So um, essentially what you have when aspartame is ingested, it quickly breaks down very quickly because this is only one bond, okay? It doesn't take much to um, break that down into aspartic acid and phenylalanine, two amino acids, and what you end up with when you do a uh, uh, hydrolysis on this last part in uh, aspartame, uh, if I were to draw just that uh, part from the acid, it looks like this. Okay, now if I inserted a water molecule in there, okay, if I insert a water molecule in here, what I, uh, what I get is an OH, okay, and then uh, I'll get an OCH3 with the other 
hydrogen. Okay, so it'll look something like this. Okay, so here is the water molecule that you insert in there. That's the hydrolysis. All right, now, so you get two amino acids and um, this compound, which is methanol. Okay, so without going into uh, any more detail, you have the same situation going on with the aspartic acid that we saw with the glutamic acid as far as at different pHs. It's going to be uh, aspartate instead of aspartic acid. Um, and it's the aspartate form that is the neurotransmitter form. That's the form that it will be in as soon as it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. Same situation, overexcites your uh, um, neurons and uh, causes um, cell death in the process because you're flooding the brain with more aspartic acid or more aspartate than it actually needs. This one is not quite as abundant as the glut glutamate um, in the brain, but it is still, I think it's the, the next most abundant neurotransmitter um, from amino acids in the brain. Okay? This uh, phenylalanine has other functions in the body, but uh, is uh, not, to my knowledge, used in the brain. Methanol, of course, this is not your uh, drinking alcohol, this is green alcohol, which is even more toxic than drinking alcohol, than the ethanol. Right? So uh, you end up with these breakdown products from the aspartame to uh, what are known as, uh, or rather uh, just one, um, excitotoxin, because it over excites your brain cells and effectively is toxic to them and you get this other amino acid and another toxic substance uh, burdening your liver um, ethanol, okay? So that is what happens when these substances are ingested in your body. You can, from other sources, learn about side effects um, of exposure to these things. And you'll see both sides of the story, but uh, I think this gives you um, an idea of what actually happens in the body, how it is processed, what is different between um, the uh, ingestion of MSG and the ingestion of the protein. Because some places, you know, they'll say, oh, it's the same thing, you're getting so much, you know, of the glut glutamate from tomatoes or from this or from that. And yes, that's true but it comes in this form, not in this form, all right? So take those things to heart, and uh, you may wish to um, limit your intake of these foreign-to-nature compounds, uh, or at least foreign to the things that we eat. You don't find MSG uh, in its free form as an amino acid. It doesn't come like that um, in appreciable quantities. In nature. So I hope this has been uh, informative and helpful to you and uh, explains a little bit about what actually happens and what is the effect of that MSG in the body.